I'd do anything for a hit. It's a shameful fact that not many people would admit about themselves, but not me. I'm nothing, if not honest. That's why they call me Frank. I cut off an arm and sliced my tongue in two for a little baggie of the good stuff. So many track marks up my arm that my poor little nephew once tried to use me as a dot to dot. Yeah. I wasn't always like this. I feel that's important to mention. I was a smart kid, a little morose and prone to melancholy, but smart. It only takes a little mistake. A friend you shouldn't have made, a trauma you ought to have faced up to. I could be you. When I was younger, I was good at writing, and after school, I managed to get a place at university to study English. I shouldn't have gone. It was at university that it all started going downhill. One fateful evening at some shitty little freshers' party above the student union, I had my first experience with weed, which led to a loving dalliance with Coke, or Charlie, as me and my friends would call it. We'd party all weekend, high off our tits, snorting powdered lines in our bedrooms and inhaling hippie crack out of latex balloons. It was fun. I wanted it to last forever. My friends didn't. They all got jobs and families. How boring. I stopped being able to afford Charlie a few weeks ago. Opted for cheaper bedtime heroin. I took her as my wife during a sad little Christmas alone. She ain't as pretty, but she gets me there all the time. But cheaper heroin is still expensive, and, well, employment's been a challenge for me. Try sticking to a job when you look like me, when you smell like me. Poor mother cried last time I saw her. My arms full with her jewelry. My brother, who gave me a black eye as I tried to slip out the back door, had to cover his mouth and nose with a rag to avoid the stench. Even my family can't stand the sight of me. An employer wouldn't look twice at me, and if he did... It would be to judge me or to make sure I didn't take the bonnet mascot off as Jaguar after the interview. So I did little jobs here and there and some shoplifting to fill in the gaps. My favorite thing to pinch is infant formula. There's always a demand for it. It goes for a pretty penny. Ten quid a tub in the shops. You could sell to penny-stripped parents at half price. They'd grab it out of your hands, even if you smelt like Danny DeVito's armpit after a workout. I sell it in a Facebook group. You know the ones. Free and for sale in whatever dump you live in. It was there that I saw the job ad. A post about a woman named Beatrice. The profile picture was a photo of a tulip. People don't often post job adverts there. It's a separate group for that, but... Sometimes they get confused, you know, old people on the, the internet, and they mix like oil and water. It seemed benign enough. Hi there, lovelies. Hope I'm posting this properly. This new technology, eh? I got a little job that needs doing. My house has gotten a little bit of a mess lately. I'm a single mother, it's hard to keep everything tidy and clean. I'm sure all you ladies will understand. We have a bit of a rat problem. It needs doing today. No time wasters, please. Cash in hand. Cleaning supplies provided. 200 pound. Edit. No negotiations, my lovelies. The number is final. Also, how do I report users? A mean man called Robert offered his pleasure sausage as payment. These youths. I chuckled myself a little. And stared at my empty wallet. Cleaning through a little rat droppings for 200 smackers. And native technophobe lady, too. It was like... Christmas, you know, I bet I could pinch a family heirloom while I was there too. So I sent her a message. Hey there, I'd be happy to do this for you. Just let me know your address. I'll be over as soon as possible. Beatrice said, Hi, my lovely. A young gentleman who can clean. What a dream. I'll pop you over my address just shortly. It's just me and my little darling who live here. My son will be in the living room. You don't have to clean in there. But you mustn't bother him. He loves his video games and hates to be distracted, thank you. And I said, sure, fine. Be there sharpish. The address wasn't very far, thankfully. My jaw was still trembling from a little bit of coke I'd managed to score last night off this deadbeat passed out in a nightclub. Still felt very fragile. The house was nice from the outside. It's an ex-council house. You could tell by the fresh paint job. It was at the end of a block and there was a mobility scooter parked by the front door. 
Thought she was a single mother, not a single grandmother. I rubbed my hands together, clambered through the gate, clapped on the door. The door opened almost immediately. It was as if she'd been there already waiting to open it. Had she? Oh, hi there, my lovely, a shrill voice startled me. I was too rough to deal with this chipmunk-ass bitch. It's so good you came. She was a portly little thing who walked with a pronounced limp. Her fingers were like Richmond sausages, and her wrinkled face had been emulsioned in a thick layer of orange foundation. She had an apron on, one of those gag ones that looked like a sexy woman in lingerie, and her lips were crusted over with cheap matte lipstick. Her efforts to disguise her age seemed to me done precisely the opposite, but who am I to judge? I'm just a neighborhood junkie, a dopehead, methhead, druggie, whatever you call us, whoever the fuck you are. Just inside here, forgive the smell. It's the rats. The exterminator said there's probably a dead one somewhere, she chirped. I crossed the threshold into the house and immediately regretted every decision I had made that led me to this point. Anyone else would have turned around and left. Not me. I had my wife, Helen, to think about, and my mistress, Charlie, to save up for. It's bad. Jesus fuck, woman, this ain't dead rat. This is a fucking family of dead rats. I covered my nose with the sleeve of my jacket. Beatrice looked offended. Ammonia hung in the air as an invisible haze, turning tears into acid and breath into hot fire. I'd smelt death only once before. It'd been my neighbor and fellow druggie, Big Bobby. His so-called mates had been too busy getting high to call anyone. He was... Bloated and blue and dripping with maggots when the body collectors came to drag his sorry ass out of the door. They had all gotten nose blind to him over the week and a half and they lived with his corpse. Easy to do when you're higher than the Burj Khalifa on stilts. Beatrice must have been nose blind too. The only way you could live here. Mind your tongue, my lovely, just like my son. I know it's bad. It's just so hard being a single mother these days. She shook her head dismissively. How old's your kid? I asked, curiously, wiping my wet eyes. I was expecting the house to be disgusting to match the stench, but the hallway was perfect. I'd seen messier show houses. Thirty-four next week, she squealed. Uh-huh. Jesus, fuck me in the ass with a bottle of white lightning. Crazy-ass bitch. Now, if you would start in the bathroom and move to the kitchen, please leave the living room to me. My son's in there. He hates to be bothered, Beatrice said. I've left all the cleaning supplies in the cupboard by the stairs. Anything you need, I shall be out in the garden. My petunias aren't looking too well, and I must tend to them, my lovely. I was expecting an absolute crap hole. I mean, the bathroom was spotless like the hallway. There were some foundation smears into the walls, but that was nothing a little degreaser couldn't handle. The kitchen was fine, too. I couldn't work out where the smell was coming from and where the rats were. Usually rats congregated in the kitchen. At least that was my experience, having had a good few infestations myself. The smell, however, lingered. No matter how much dental I sprayed or the flora I wiped under my nose, there was death in the air, but where the frick was it? I'd finished up the bathroom and the kitchen and spared a thought for the living room. She hadn't wanted me to go in there. Maybe that's where she was hiding the good stuff. These old codgers always had some money slipped away somewhere. Her son was in there, a little risky, but I could be subtle. The layout of these council houses were strange. The living room was to the back of the property, not connected to the kitchen or even the bathroom. The door to it was shut, and I could hear a very quiet buzz whirring around the threshold. Was this it? The smell was stronger here, but why wouldn't she want me to clean the source of the stench? Wasn't that the whole point of my employment? When I opened the door, my eyes burned as if they had been met by hot smoke from an oven. I coughed and felt a sickly sweetness cling to the back of my throat. This was it. This is where death lived. The TV was on. Call of Duty looked like it. I could hear the push of fingers on buttons. Her son was there. I could see a rush of greasy brown hair sticking up from the back of the fabric patterned sofa. That looked like something from the 90s. All right, dude. Just cleaning up for your mom. I said cautiously, struggling to get the words out as the ammonia overwhelmed me. There were flies buzzing around, but they all seemed to be congregating around the couch, around her son. It didn't reply. I was scared. 
scared of what I'd see sitting on the couch. Was he dead? Was her son the cause of that awful stench? And then I saw it laying on the couch. Then I saw it laying there on the couch like a washed up whale in summer. A rotund mass which used to be a man, swollen with rot and gas, enshrined in mustard stained sheets and liquefied fat. There were mountains of maggots basking in the chaos of seeping flesh and rotting bed sores. I, I couldn't see the legs. It seemed to me that they had fused together with the couch. The piles of excrement served as a goopy glue to aid the cursed marriage of man and couch. Holy fucking shit. I stumbled backwards, knocking over my cleaning trolley. I wondered how long ago he died. To have rotted away like that too fucking long ago. No wonder there were rats. Beatrice was crackers, more crackers than the druggies who lived on South Street, who would live with Big Bobby's corpse for a week. Then I heard it again. The fingers on buttons, the mashing of the controller, the TV still on, and a lone shooter sniping from some hill in pixelated Beirut. Motherfucker was still al alive. Just as I realized it, he let out a large groan and twisted his horrifying mask to look at me. There were shackles where his ankles should have been, buried under blankets of pillowy soft flesh. If I touched his skin, I imagined it would come slewing off the bone like a well-cooked Christmas turkey. Yeah, I'll... he mouthed at me. It was all he could do, and it... and it seemed to take him a lot to say. His jowls shook as he said it. His rotted teeth clattered. Now... It was too late. I woke up a few hours later. Across on the rotted mass of her son, there had been a small couch, two-seater. It was in the same gaudy print as the other one, looked new and was untarnished by rot. I woke up there, my bloodied head resting on the arm of the chair. Beatrice was beside me with her frying pan she must have walled me with. I tried to move, but my legs were shackled together. Don't panic, my lovely. Everything's all right. I did tell you not to come in here. I don't have many valuables. I'm sure that's what you were looking for, right? I don't hire drug addicts to clean my house without hiding my precious things first. Now, now, don't worry. I'm here to help, she smiled. We all have our vices, mine is tea. I could drink it all day. My Connor here loves his yell of duty, or whatever it's called. I live to please. What is it you want? I thought about all the shit I'd seen. A man fused into a couch, rotted to the point where he resembled nothing but a lump of flesh. Things no one should ever have to see. Run. I, I wanted to leave. I wanted to not have eyes. I wanted to feel good again. Unmarred by trauma. I wanted the smell of ammonia out of my nose. I wanted... I wanted... Charlie, I sputtered. I realized Beatrice would not know what Charlie was. I, I want cocaine. I want to get high. Of course, my lovely. Your mummy will get it for you, she smiled. All you have to do is stay right here, and I will take care of you. It's pretty funny when you think about it. Could be a lot worse. I mean, there are children starving in Africa and junkies with no fix. Who am I to complain? I don't have to do anything for a hit anymore. Hi there, my lovelies. This is Beatrice. My little darling loves writing stories, so I gave him a notebook and pen to pass the time. I decided to post this here. He does love to exaggerate, that little rascal. I'm not sure if this is the right place for it, but I do love to please. I feel very strongly that everyone deserves to have their voice heard. With that being said, would any of you lovelies be interested in a cleaning job? 200 pound cash in hand. I'll supply the cleaning supplies. I can be very generous. There's some extra money in it for you if you're good at digging holes. My poor garden has gotten out of hand. See you soon. Beatrice.
Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for watching tonight's video or by listening to tonight's episode of the podcast or by finding this in some other way that's not a podcast or a video, which I probably didn't upload, but hey, thank you for listening. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. That includes everybody who's been waiting for me to update my Patreon, and I thank you all so, so much for being so patient with me. But especially, I want to give a thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Chance Burnett, Donna Krause, Tristan Pelton, Acid System, Adam Garrick, Aaron Stormcrow, Ika Limchok, Amber Clark, Angelus, Atomorous, Bastion Beefcake, Blue the Enigma, Braden Morris, Broken Beast 320, Captain Scurvy, Caspian, Shelly J, Cory Kenshin, Cronut 509, Crusader Chocobo, Cryptic Nightmares, Curse Pox Primarch, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Daniel Paulson, Darth Myver, Deleted Account, Dirt Diver 030, M, Esteban, Fester's Lampshade, Freddy Krueger, Gorag Tri Magazine, Grand Moth Vinoki, Hades Nephew, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Harley, Himbo Jerry, Horseman Sec Time, Insanity Gamer X, Jay Cairns, Jesus Cornell, Jordan Humble, Justin LaFontaine, Kaylee Ambrose, Kiri the Sloth, Crazy Kid, Cryolinian, Lambda M98, Lisa Cottrell, Little Crow, Lord Life's Best, Lupita Galvin, Love You Eminem, Matt Bach, Melted Lake, Michael Allen Jr. Bashirs, Mike, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Nate Cull, Nico Kayo, Psychomo, Red Shadow Cat, Rob Like Sharp Things, Sama High, Sashi Sasaku, Seclude, Stricken, Tali Sue, Tater Chip, That Creepy Chick, The Ginger Bros, Turtle Man, Voice of Sand, William King, Xavier and Cheyenne, Yargul, and Zachary Graphius. If you'd like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, then please head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, or you can always check out the names in the description down below, or you can honestly support for even just $1, because it really helps me out when you guys do, and I appreciate it infinitely. So thank you all on Patreon. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you for watching on YouTube and subscribing and liking videos and leaving comments about videos that you like or leaving comments about why I haven't finished the fourth audiobook yet or leaving comments about... <laughs> New stories that you've seen and you'd like to see on this channel. And to everyone, sweet dreams.